So the goal of today's video is how to set up a table view and how to populate that table view with data. So if you don't know what a table view is, first we should probably go over that. So we can actually see this is a table view on the side, but it's a Mac OS uh, uh, configuration of a table view. If you think of the Messages app, if you think of the App Store, pretty much anything that lists out data, uh, Instagram actually is using an enlarged table view, though that's what a table view is. It's basically uh, infinite rows that can load data and present them in uh, a table. So today we're going to be creating a simple table view and we're going to populate it with some data so that you can get an idea of how this works and what the required methods are. So if you haven't seen my videos before, they all explain what my settings are. Basically, we're writing an Objective-C. We have a universal application, so it's for iPhone and iPad. And then um, it's a single view application, so we're starting from scratch. Um, most of the skills are building on top of each other. If you know how to code, then um, I guess you don't really need to look at the first couple of videos, but everything I use in the next video should generally stem from before, and I'm not going to re-explain those things, so just go check back at the previous two videos. Okay, so first thing we're going to need to do is, as usual, we're going to go to our storyboard and set up the table view. So go into your storyboard, and you can see we have our view controller right here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our objects bar again and we're going to look for the table view. Now there is a table view controller, but that's a little bit different because it acts like a full view controller on its own and it's meant to have like an embedded table view. We're trying to take a table view and put it in our pre-existing view controller. So we're just going to go and I guess I'll just type it table view. And you can see table view is the second option and just drag and drop. Um, you can just fill up the whole screen because we're just going to populate with data. We're not going to really uh, put any buttons or anything here. So I'm just going to fill up that much um, and add constraints. I, I just honestly just do to that every boundary on all four sides. Just go to the nearest neighbor. That way you don't have to play around with width and stuff like that. Um, once you have it going, this is, this is going to be our table view. And um, that's pretty much all we actually need to do except what we're also going to want to do is you're going to hold control click from table view and we're going to drag it here up to the view controller and then select data source and delegate. Just do that and you should have both. So if you were to click on the table view and go into the sixth option which is the outlets you should see that the data source of this table view and the delegate of this table view is the view controller and I'll explain what both of those mean but first, let's jump into the code. So first, we're going to go into our header file. And um, what we're going to do is at this top, uh, you see this is at interface. This is the, the file uh, where you declare things. And we're going to make a caret UI table view delegate, comma, UI table view data source. And close that. So as you know, we already we just connected two properties, which is a table view delegate and a table view data source of this table view right here. So what are those two things? So um, basically, the data source and the delegate are two protocols. So protocols create required functions that um, a file needs to have. So because we have a table view, there's also some like methods you need to have. Like you need to have a method that tells the table view what's going to fill it up, how many objects are in our table view, and stuff like that. So that's why you need a protocol. A protocol requires that you have specific methods. So in this case, there are two protocols that a table view adheres to, and that is a delegate and a data source. So we connect it to our view controller. So when our table view is like, OK, uh, what's the data I'm using? It's going to go and ask the view controller and check its functions. So then our view controller needs to uh, needs to notify the table view, yeah, I do have these methods. I am conforming to that protocol. So that's why at the top of our header file where we declare stuff, we're going to put these two in this caret and saying that the view controller is going to have the methods that this these two protocols ask for. Um, yeah, so we can go actually straight into our implementation file. And now what we need to do is set up the protocols here. So first we're going to do the uh, data source protocol. So the data source protocol literally just handles data. So we just need to tell it how many uh, rows we have in our table, how many sections, and then for each uh, data point, we need to tell it uh, what object, it, it, or just tell it how the cell is going to look. So um, actually, before we even get into this, let's make our array of data. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back into the view controller and make a curly bracket and do, we're going to do NS array, we'll just call it data array. 
So generally when you're working with a table view, you're going to use an array because an array can hold multiple objects, which kind of follows the single dimension format that you have for a table view. So uh, you type in NS array, asterisk, so this, uh, or sorry, we don't have to type in NS array, we already have this. So it's a data array. We set that equal to NS array allocate. So you can do alloc. This is probably, I think this is the first time we worked with alloc, but um, basically, for allocate, you need to allocate memory in the system when you create a new object. Um, and this is a pretty standard format for NS objects. So like if you wanted to make like your own UI table view for some reason, TV equals UI table view, you do allocate in it, and then what happens is each method has its own custom inits. So like this was init with objects, so you're initializing an object that you just created memory for. Um, and you, it gives you space to put an object. So we can put objects in here. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to put in a bunch of strings. So honestly, you can put anything in here. I'm just going to put the letters of the alphabet, and not all of them. We'll just go to like, I don't know, we'll see how inspired I am in a second. Um, but yeah, so you just need to populate it with some data so that we have something to work with. Okay, that's that. We'll do F just for sake of completion. Um, okay, yeah. So we have an array, and it has just. I think what is that six six strings? It's A B C D E F. Um, okay, so what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to dynamically load a table view without actually telling it anything specifically, like what the actual data of this array is. And I'll show you the power of that and why people use table views. Um, so the first data source protocol. So these are basically required methods. Um, you need to do dash uh, ns integer. So that's an integer. If you don't know what the data types are, you should definitely do like Code Academy or something to figure that out. We're going to do a number of sections in table view. This one's not required, but it's a good practice to use because uh, sometimes you don't want to have just one section. So like in a table view, uh, you would have rows, and then you can separate those rows into quote, into sections, right? So um, yeah, so that's what number of sections table view does. Next one, following the similar format, but you start with table view, number of rows in section. Okay. So number of rows in section, assuming because we only have one section, now we need to tell it how many rows to create. So basically one row per object, and we don't even have to count actually how many objects there are because what we're going to do is, we see the data type is NS integer, so we're going to return an integer, so we're going to return, and then what we'll return is data array dot count. So dot count, so it's a property of our NS array and the count property is the length of it. So that's how many objects there are in it. So in this case, it's probably it's going to return six. Um, but the reason that we're going to use data array dot count is because I will be able to later delete this object or something like that, and it'll just dynamically update rather than me having to manually count how many objects there are or something like that. And that's going to get handy when like you're working with live data, so you obviously don't have any control over it. Um, okay, so then there should be, there's one more method for data source. So the last one we need to do is that most important one. It's a hyphen UI table view cell. You can just pause it, honestly. Asterisk. So, so this is an actual object, so you need a pointer asterisk here. You'll see NS integers are not really an object. Like if you create an NS integer, it's just like num equals five, like something like that. See? So you don't have to actually put an asterisk pointer, so that's why um, when you put it in the return type, you don't have to have an asterisk there. For this, you do need one because it is a pointer to an actual object. Um, so then table view, and it'll, it'll show you that's the only option you have. So we're going to create a UI table view cell, and I'm just going to call it a cell equals, and then, okay, just follow along here, UI table view cell allocate in it, or sorry, it's, uh, okay, backtrack, backtrack. So we're going to do table view, dq, reusable cell with identifier. And we're going to make our own identifier here. So I'm just going to do uh, data cell. So you can make like any string to identify it by. Um, OK. And then next we're going to do if cell equals equals nil. Just follow along and I'll explain this. If cell equals equals nil, cell equals UI table view cell allocate in it. So that's the same pattern I was talking about, just allocate in it. But this one we're doing in it with style, UI table view cell style defaults, and then our reuse identifier, you need to put the same one that you put up there. Okay, so I'm gonna explain what this does. So space it out. Um, 
Okay, so this first line, what it's doing is a, a table view cell, table view, the reason it's so nice is it's really efficient. What it does is, um, let's say you can only fit eight cells on a page, right? When it scrolls, what it's going to, actually, there's a pretty good example right here. So when it scrolls, what this is actually doing right now is it's pulling new data and throwing out old data, right? So stuff that goes off screen doesn't exist anymore until you scroll back up. And in that way, it's saving memory and it's not like, it doesn't have to host all the objects at once. Uh, kind of like on Instagram, when you scroll down enough, then it starts to reload, right? So you have to put a reuse identifier because only cells that are like the same type of cell can be reused. So you start off by saying, okay, our cell is equal to whatever cell we're reusing, and so you give it an identifier. Thing is, if it's the first time you're loading a cell, right, then it's going to be equal to nil. It's not going to actually have like a pre-existing object, so you have to, re you have to create it. So if the cell is nil, then we're going to do cell equals, and then we allocate and initialize a new cell. So in the instance case that this is our first time scrolling, so none of these objects have been created, it'll create those objects and uh, uh, put them in there. So that's just like a safeguard uh, method. And now all you need to do is you need to return the cell. So that ensures that at the end of this method, we're returning the cell that we've created. And now the only thing left to do is we need to set the cells, I think it's a label, right? It's just a la text label. We need to set the text of the text label. So cell.textlabel.text, kind of long, but the text label of the cell, dot text, right? We, we worked with the label before. It always has a dot text property. And we're going to set that equal to, um, and in this case, we're going to do data array, object at index, index path, dot row. So, um, okay. Working on this method, so so we're, set, we're we're trying to get a string instead of equal to the text of our cell, whatever cell we're on. So to do that, this method actually has something called an index path, and an index path is the location you're at, right? So this index path is zero, one, two, three, four, all the way down to however many objects there are. So it's, it's just literally a number uh, representing that row in the object thing. And so um, when you're trying to find which object to assign to that uh, cell. All you need to do is get the index path dot row in our case because each row corresponds with one object, right? A, B, C, D, whatever. So that's what we're doing. We're just setting it equal to the object at the index in this array, index path dot row. And that's the syntax for an array. You just do the array, object at index, and then the number of the index you want. In this case, index path dot row. And so this is dynamic because if we were to delete one of these, it'll readjust. This will readjust. All of it readjusts. Um, okay. So the one last method we're going to implement is the only other really important one, and this is part of the delegate, not the data source. So the, the, there were two protocols. There was a data source and a delegate. So the delegate has one fun method, and that is you do hyphen void table view did select row at index path. Once again, just pause if you need to. Um, so yeah, um, this is what gets called when you click one of these. That's, that's how it reacts. So in our case, we're just going to log what the object was just to make sure it works. NS log, we used this last video, and we're just going to do a percent at, which we talked about. It just fills in for a string variable. And in our case, it'll be data array object at index, index path dot row. So all in all, all this does is if we were to hypothetically click on navigation controller, it would print out the word navigation controller because that would be the data array object here. So just going through the hypothetical here quickly, um, this our table view only has one section, um, but it'll say return data array dot count. That's for the number of rows. So okay, the table view asks how many rows are there in the table view. So it'll say okay, well, what is the length of the data array? Length of the data array is one, two, three. It's six. Okay, so we return six. So the table view is like okay, I'll create six cells. Six cells have been created. Now it's like okay, I'm looking at the first cell. What should I put here? It tries to pull something, but there will be nothing since it's the first time. It's like, okay, so I'm just going to create a new cell. And to set, set the text of that cell, uh, it's going to be equal to the object at the index, index path.row. In this case, it's going to be 0. So what's the very first object of the data array? That'll be A. So it'll print A there. And then if you click on that same thing, it'll go through the same process and say A. Um, that should be about it. So with that, let's load it up and see what happens. I'm on a 7 plus and I regret that, but that's okay.
Oh, look at that speed. Okay, it's in the background. And there is... An, oh, okay, it was loading. Uh, so as you can see, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, as we expected. If I touch one, it prints out A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, to quickly demonstrate my point about dynamicness, I'm going to change that to A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, and I'm going to delete the sixth one. And then when I run it, what you're going to see is it's going to get rid of the last object and they're all going to update. It's going to be wonderful. And you see, it still works no matter what my data is. So using this, you could pretty much make, you can make message apps, you could uh, get data from the internet and print it out in rows for people, like emails or something like that. Pretty much anything, um, as long as you get a good understanding of the fundamentals. So this is just how to make a basic table view. Working from here, it can obviously get more complicated, but yeah, that's it. Thanks.